The next grammar point is want, can, and other similar constructions. Such constructions are formed with the help of modal verbs. What is a modal verb? A modal verb is a verb that is used with another verb in a sentence. Want, can are such modal verbs. Let's take some examples. I want to go. Here the verb want goes with the verb go. So that's why it is a modal verb. I can speak. Here the verb can goes with the verb speak. So can is also a modal verb. In Hindi, chahana is a modal verb. It means to wish, to want. Sakna is also a modal verb. It means can. Let's take these modal verbs one by one. The first modal verb we take here is chahana. That means to want, to wish. The other verbs that go with chahana take the infinitive form, the dictionary form. Here are some examples. Hum Bharat jana chahate hain. We want to go to India. So chahana is the modal verb which changes in number and gender according to the subject. The subject here is hum, the masculine plural subject. That's why chahate hain. The other verb is jana, to go, which is an infinitive form, the dictionary form. Here you can notice that the modal verb chahana comes at the end of the sentence and the other verb comes before the modal verb. Hum Bharat jana chahate hain. We want to go to India. Next example. Wo Hindi seekhna chahata hai. He wants to learn Hindi. Wo here is a third person singular masculine subject pronoun and that's why chahata hai. And it goes with the another verb seekhna to learn which is an infinitive form. Wo Hindi seekhna chahata hai. He wants to learn Hindi. And the last example, main ghar jana chah raha hoon, par bus nahi aa rahi. I want to go home, but bus is not coming. Here, the model verb chahana is in continuous form. Chah raha hoon. It means I want, but literally it means I am wanting. Main ghar jana chah raha hoon. I am wanting to go home. I want to go home, par bus nahi aa rahi. The bus is not coming. The next model verb we take is sakna, that means can. Unlike the verb chahana, the verb sakna goes only with the root of other verbs. Let's take some examples. Wo nach nahi sakti, she cannot dance. Here you can see that the verb nachna to dance is not in its full form, the dictionary form, the infinitive form nachna. Only the root of the verb is here. Wo nach nahi sakti, she cannot dance. Another example. Main ek ghante mein 10 km daur sakta hoon. I can run 10 km in one hour. Again, you can see that the verb daurna here is only in its root form. Daur sakta hoon. I can run. The final example. Kya tum mujhe 50 rupay de sakte ho? Can you give me 50 rupees? Again, the verb here is dena to give and it only takes the root form. De. De sakte ho. Can you give? Can you give me 50 rupees? Kya tum mujhe 50 rupay de sakte ho? And also keep in mind that the verb sakna comes at the end of the sentence and it changes in number and gender based on the subject. So in the first example, wo is a third person singular feminine. That's why sakti. In the second, second example, the subject is ma, which is masculine subject. That's why sakta hum. And in the third example, the subject is masculine tum. So it is sakte ho. The model verb sakna comes at the end of the sentence and the other verb comes just before the model verb. The next model verb is pana, it means to be able to. It also takes the root of the other verb just like sakna. In fact, the meaning of the verbs pana and sakna are very similar. Oftentimes they are interchangeably used. Let's take some examples. Kya aap thoda hat sakte hain? Main TV nahi dekh pa raha. Can you please move a bit? I am not able to see the TV. I cannot see the TV. The model verb pana goes with the other verb in its root form, dekh. Not the full verb, just the root. Dekh. Dekh pa raha, able to see. The second example, wo mere samne kuch nahi bol paata. He cannot, he is not able to speak in front of me. The verb bolna has its root form only. Bol. Bol paata, able to speak. The last example, aaj kal main so nahi pa raha. These days I am not able to sleep. These days I cannot sleep. Again, the verb sona is in its root form. Another thing to keep in mind that the verb pana, 
meaning to be able to is mostly used in the negative sentences. It is mostly used in the sentences with negation. Here in all our examples, it is with negation. Next model verb is chahiye. In fact, it is not a verb, it is a phrase, it is a type of construction. In one of our previous grammar points, we have taken chahiye with nouns. It was in the meaning of want and need. When chahiye goes with a noun, it means want and need. Mujko kitab chahiye, I need a book, I want a book. The phrase chahiye can also go with a verb. In that case, it means should. For example, mujko jana chahiye means I should go. Tumko panna chahiye means you should read. Just remember that the phrase chahiye takes the subject with the postposition ko. Let's take a few more examples. Bachon ko zyada nahi bolna chahiye. The children should not talk much. The subject goes with the postposition ko, so bachon ko. The second one, ab mujhe chalna chahiye. I should go now. Here again, the subject is with the postposition ko, mujko. Here it is the short form, mujhe. The last example, hame parikshaon ke liye padna chahiye. We should study for examinations. So hame is humko, so humko padna chahiye. Hame padna chahiye. We should study.